It's happening in North Carolina, and I was over on the Inside Carolina board today in advance of this segment, and I just wanted to ask the fine folks over there, has it happened yet? The thing, the inflection point, the thing that pushes you over the top. Has it happened? Is it coming still? And if it's coming, what does it look like? So this pertains to everyone. This is not just a North Carolina segment. I think this really is going to hit home. And what they're doing at Chapel Hill should hit home with a lot of programs that have underachieved. If you've ever been in an office setting and you've known the salaried employee that constantly complains about everything and is totally inefficient, even though they're capable of doing everything they've been hired to do, but they don't get work done and they just complain all the time. Meanwhile, the grinder, quiet intern is just making the wheel turn in the background somewhere. If you've ever seen that dynamic play out in the office, that's what's happening in college football. You've got several complainers, and then you've got North Carolina just grinding away, just putting together a winner. So today, the reason I wanted to talk about it today is Travis Shaw did indeed commit to North Carolina. This is a monumental achievement for them. He is the second highest rated commitment ever in North Carolina recruiting history. He is a five-star defensive lineman. He's 6'5", 310. He is out of Greensboro. I was almost at this commitment today. I can't remember why that fell through. Anyway, uh, it was yesterday. So anyway, um, second highest rated commit ever. So what is this? Is he going to win championships for him single-handedly? No. But this continues a pattern because now you start to tie this name into names like Javari Ritzy, into names like Keyshawn Silver. Remember what they did in state last year in general. They cleaned up recruiting in state. So people even last year, when that groundswell of in-state momentum started to build and crescendo, people started looking and saying, ooh, that Travis Shaw kid in Greensboro next year. Ooh, man, I don't know, though. You know, he's, he's got five stars next to his name, and everyone's offering him. How are we going to land him? Well, they just did. But what does this have to do, though? What does this have to do with other programs? I want you to notice what you don't hear from North Carolina. I have not heard a single time any of these folks say, man, I wish we could compete, but the college football is just set up against us. It's built to keep us out. The system is rigged against us. None of them are saying it. You know why? Because they're too busy playing the system. They're too busy building a winner. They're too busy looking around for the glass ceiling that a lot of you have claimed is on college football above the heads of programs like theirs and saying, oh, I don't see it. I, I, I hear a lot of excuses. I don't actually see it. And Mac Brown has certainly come in and said, stop listening to these people talk about ceilings. There isn't one here. Let's go knock it out of the park in our home state. Let's instill a culture that is unique to North Carolina, and let's go win football games. Uh, they've done one. They've done two. They're in the process of doing three and could do number three to a much greater extent this year. North Carolina is capable of whatever they want to be capable of. Uh, the only thing that has stopped them and many other programs in the past is just not believing you can do it and not getting the right mixture of people in there. So not only do they have the staff, not only are they recruiting with their hair on fire, not only do they have quarterbacks solved now with Howell and in the future with Drake May, which don't discount that at all, even though I listed it like fourth, not only have they done all that, not only do they have an incredible culture, players want to go there now. Coaches, administrative types, graphic artists want to go there now. And so they've invested and they've got investment from the right places. There, there, are no, there are no 14 different agendas at North Carolina. Everyone understands what the deal is. Everyone's on the train. It's moving the same direction. And it's ridiculous when you look at them accomplish it. And they're doing it with a coach that a lot of people kind of scoffed at when he was hired. And then you look at all the millions that some other programs spent and the vastly superior resource pool that a lot of other programs have at logos and brands that have much longer represented college football tradition and dominance than that North Carolina logo has, and they can't get it done, and North Carolina is. Now, you want to tell me the determining factor is separation in this sport? You want to tell me the determining factor is, well, the college football playoff has just created this gulf? No, it hasn't. Either that or North Carolina is, is the best group of bridge builders in the world. I don't think they just built a bridge over a canyon. I think they got to it and said, well, this is a ditch. Hold on, hold my stuff, and I'll hop over, and then toss it to me, and then you hop over, and then we'll all hop over, and all of a sudden we're over here with the winners. So that leads me to this point. 
this is a huge season for them. You could be in the process of watching a program join that Tier 2 or Tier 1 club. They're not there right now. They are not there yet. One of the things I love about the Inside Carolina board is when I go over there, um, no one calls me the names that some of these other boards do in my DMs. But secondly, they're brutally realistic about where they are. And so I went over there today and I said, what's the inflection point? In other words, if you make it to the mountaintop, if you win an ACC championship in the near future, is the reason it happens already in the house? Has it already occurred? Or is it in the future? And what's that inflection point going to be? Uh, I think the consensus amongst Carolina fans is, well, we have not gotten that landmark win. Now, they almost beat Clemson a couple of years ago. But even if they did that, it would have been ahead of schedule. But if they go to South Bend this year, for example, and they were to beat Notre Dame, they had trouble with them last year. If they beat Notre Dame this year on the road, depending on what the Irish are at that point, that could be it. But I think we all know what ultimately this is leading to. Because as long as Clemson is what they are, you're just running your head into a brick wall until you top them. And to top them, in a lot of cases, you got to outscore them. But you also have to have waves of defensive linemen. And they did not have that last year, and they are building towards having that now. Uh, they would tell you, that coaching staff would tell you, got about eight or nine defensive linemen that we feel like we can play winning football with at this point. Now, if they keep recruiting the way they are, they're going to end up recruiting over some guys. That's not a bad thing. That's a very good thing. But I want you to pay attention to what's happening in North Carolina and the process and the formula that's in place. And then I want to rhetorically ask you, what stops a dozen other programs from doing that? It, have they found a magic ingredient? Does Mac Brown have a cheat code on college football? Or did they just understand, there are no real shortcuts, but there's a way to do this a lot quicker maybe than people think is possible at North Carolina. They're in the process of doing it. And you know what else they did? They also walked in and they looked around and they said, where is Miami? Where, anybody seen Florida State? So who's going to take this number two chair? Now, that's not their ultimate goal, but the number two chair in the ACC was wide open when Mac Brown got here. And he said, well, that number two chair is, is not 10 miles away. It's right over there. So God, why don't we go sit in the number two chair while we figure out how to get in the king's chair? Let's go sit in the number two chair. They're there. They're already there. And so it's college football. Things change year to year, but they're there right now. So the next step is you got to find a way to beat Clemson. That's the next step. Is that going to happen this year? I don't know. They don't play in the regular season. But what I'm saying is you're watching a program that is very much on a climb, and they don't perceive that ceiling to be on them the, the way that some of these programs do. And they don't have that woe is me mentality. They think everything is possible over there. And since they think that, here's the added bonus. Everything is possible over there. You actually can win a national championship, as it turns out, at North Carolina.